Nestled in the fertile Mesilla Valley between the majestic Rocky Mountains and historic Rio Grande, Las Cruces is a modern-day boomtown rich in history. Tradition has it that the name Las Cruces resulted from the numerous crosses that were erected to mark the spot where early settlers fell prey to Indian attacks along the Rio Grande. It could also be that the name was derived from the Spanish word for crossing or crossroad, since Las Cruces was located at the hub of north-south and east-west travel. Las Cruces was founded in 1849 when U.S. Army Lieutenant Delos B. Sackett, using rawhide rope and stakes, plotted out 84 city blocks. Ten years later, in 1859, St. Genevieve's Church was built in the center of the town, where it dominated the townscape and served the faithful for more than 100 years. In the fall of 1907, Las Cruces became a municipality with Martin Lohman serving as the new town's first mayor. In 1946, Las Cruces was declared a city and its first city elections were held that year. In 1948, Las Cruces voters adopted the commission manager form of government, which later evolved into the current council manager form of government. And in 1991, Las Cruces chose their first voter elected mayor. As time evolved, the city decided to change its city charter, and they decided to finally elect the mayor at large. Whereas before, what they did, they would elect, you know, five, seven members, and then they would elect one of themselves for a two year mayoral term. So really it took um, four votes and you were mayor. Then when they changed, uh, they changed the city charter back in the 80s, they decided that they were gonna have a citywide election. And uh, that was the election I ran for back in 91. The late 1960s and early 1970s weren't kinda downtown. St. Genevieve's Church and Main Street, which ran through the center of the downtown business district, both fell victim to urban renewal. In the 1950s, suburban malls were the new thing. People, more, more families had cars, more people moved out into the suburbs. They created these malls near where people lived with big parking lots and indoor shopping. And, and it was the big thing. And everybody moved to the mall. All the big retail moved out of downtowns nationwide. Um, so there, in, the federal government listened to the cries of downtowns saying, you know, we're dying here, it's just killing our economy. So what, what the response was was something called the Urban Renewal Project. And they, in, in the instance of Las Cruces, for example, the thought was, well, if we make it serene and quiet and, and uh, like a mall, partially enclosed, you know, then we'll, we'll, we'll reattract those businesses. Well, that wasn't the reason people left. And, and, and you know, hindsight's 2020. We didn't, you know, they didn't know that at the time. They did the best they could. Um, there was about 100 urban renewal projects done nationwide where they took the main streets out. And that was kind of, the, as, as often said, the final nail in the coffin. St. Genevieve's was torn down and rebuilt at a new location. And Main Street was closed, turning the downtown business district into a pedestrian mall. The move nearly killed downtown, forcing many businesses to relocate and rendering the area a virtual ghost town. But in early 2000, a movement to revitalize the area went into full swing. The historic Rio Grande Theater reopened following a complete renovation. Built in 1926, the Rio Grande Theater is the nation's last surviving two-story adobe theater, it now serves as a performing arts center for all forms of performance art. Another major achievement is the reopening of Main Street after nearly 40 years. Traffic now flows again through a picturesque setting. We've got everything else. It's great weather. We've got great people. We've got great culture. If we can keep make this downtown uh, turn around and, and uh, make it a, a place to be, I think we're just, just going to be the best city in the world. Along with the reopening of Main Street is the establishment of a civic plaza for outdoor activities. A new city hall on the north end of Main Street downtown consolidates various offices into one location. Also part of the downtown landscape is a new $80 million federal building. Recreational opportunities for southern New Mexico include a new regional recreation and aquatic center in Las Cruces. And a new convention-style center is designed to accommodate large venues such as conventions and trade shows. We're trying to, to create these opportunities so that people want to come to our city, have the, the quality of life things that, that they expect, 
when they come to a community. Um, manufacturing companies, people who come will come here to provide jobs for their employees. Those employees would like to have the quality of life that's offered by having amenities such as recreation centers, um, swimming pools, parks, things of that nature. So we're trying to get ahead of that game and provide the, the amenities now so that we'll be prepared to deal with that. Las Cruces International Airport serves as the aviation hub of southern New Mexico. It offers a variety of services for aviators. It's also the world headquarters for the Rocket Racing League, which is NASCAR-style racing in the sky. It was also the first home of the world-famous X-Prize Cup. Just across Interstate 10 from Las Cruces International Airport is the West Mesa Industrial Park. An array of businesses take advantage of the industrial park's proximity to the interstate, airport, and Las Cruces's workforce. The rankings that we've seen lately, uh, that, that Las Cruces is on the radar screen, not only across the United States, but even internationally. I mean, it's, and it's for a lot of reasons. It's our, our, our weather, our quality of life, the good planning that we've done, the opportunities that we present with our relationships that we have. We're very diverse in our community, and we're continuing to pursue more diversity um, with our relationships with the University, New Mexico State, um, White Sands Missile Range, NASA, and the future spaceport. I mean, there's just so many opportunities, and those, those those things are, are putting us in the, in the light across the country and people are starting to look at us as somewhere they'd like to be. New Mexico State University has its home in Las Cruces. NMSU is classified by the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching as a doctoral research university. NMSU is one of the nation's top universities for Hispanic students and it received a best value rating by Kaplan Newsweek College Catalog. Lining the banks of the Rio Grande are the fields that produce the world's best quality chili, which is used not only in local restaurants, but also in a variety of products worldwide. Another agricultural giant is the area's pecan industry, which is one of the world's largest. Acres of pecan groves provide a colorful canopy. <laughs> Another major draw to the Las Cruces area is historic Mesilla, one-time stomping grounds for the likes of Billy the Kid, and now serves as a center for tourist activity. Restaurant and shop-lined streets encircle the main plaza. Mesilla, at one time, was the largest town between San Antonio, Texas and, and San Diego, California, going from uh, east to west and the largest town between Chihuahua to uh, Santa Fe going from south to north. Uh, that all changed with the railroad and, and that's when Las Cruces really developed as, a, as an ex extremely important busy city. A wide range of housing options are available in Las Cruces. With golf course estates and panoramic views, Las Cruces boasts some of the finest homes in the area. Beautiful weather, friendly people, and superb quality of life all come together to truly make Las Cruces a great place to live. <laughs>